Hi there, Psych2Goers. Before we begin, we'd like to thank you for your support on our channel. We aim to create psychology and mental health content for you in an accessible way, and we hope you learn something new from our videos. Let's begin. Have you ever had an intense crush on someone before? Maybe you couldn't stop thinking about them, or you felt giddy every time they texted you back. According to psychologist Dr. Balfour Awa, the average length of a crush is four months, but these feelings of infatuation can last anywhere from a few hours to a few years. If your crush lasts longer than a couple of years, it may be a sign of limerence, a term used to describe an addiction to the feeling of being in love. But limerence is rare. Only 5 to 10% of the U.S. population will ever experience it. Love sickness is a more common, less intense form of limerence that occurs when our brain releases feel-good chemicals like dopamine, serotonin, oxytocin, and vasopressin as a reaction to the person we have a crush on. So, are you suffering from love sickness? Here are six signs you're lovesick. One, you fantasize about them. Do you make up detailed scenarios about your crush in your head? If you often find yourself daydreaming about them or having imaginary conversations with them, this may be a sign of lovesickness. When you're infatuated with someone, there's a level of uncertainty surrounding them that makes you giddy and excited. Imagining a chance encounter with your crush or future with them is one way of processing your feelings. But if these daydreams persist and interfere with your productivity, you may be dealing with lovesickness rather than a simple crush. Two, you idealize them. According to the American Psychological Association, idealization is exaggerating someone's positive traits without seeing or acknowledging their negative ones. When you're lovesick over someone, it can be easy to imagine them in a perfect light because you feel good around them. When this happens, you might not notice or might ignore your crush's flaws, even if your friends point their flaws out. So if you find yourself talking and thinking only positive things about your crush, even if you know deep down that they're not perfect, you're still in the infatuation phase. If these feelings persist, it could turn into lovesickness. Three, you can't stop thinking about them. It's normal to have your crush on your mind, especially when you first realize your feelings for them. But if you can't get them out of your head, even when you really need to focus on other things, you may be experiencing lovesickness. Albert Walken, a psychologist and professor at Sacred Heart University, compares brain processes of those experiencing limerence to those in people with OCD. Because lovesickness is not as extreme as limerence, if you're dealing with lovesickness, you might still have repeated, intrusive, or distracting thoughts about your crush that may interfere with your daily routine, but you can usually overcome them with effort. Four, you read into everything they do. Do you reread every text your crush sends you looking for a hidden meaning? Do you catch yourself paying closer attention to the slight changes in their tone of voice rather than what they're actually saying? If so, this could be a sign of lovesickness. In the same way that you might idealize someone you're infatuated with, if you obsess over your crush's every word and action, you can quickly become attached to the idea of them rather than their actual personality. If your crush is sending you mixed signals or you don't know them well enough to read them yet, you may feel especially giddy or on edge riding the roller coaster of happiness and disappointment, which is a symptom of lovesickness. Five, you are extremely nervous around them. Do you experience increased heart rate, flushing, shaking, and sweating when your crush is nearby? With lovesickness, these feelings are more intense. If you are lovesick, you might also experience heart palpitations, heightened anxiety, and nervousness. A strong fear of rejection can also come with lovesickness which might make you feel afraid to be yourself around your crush. So if you feel weak in the knees whenever your crush walks by or speaks to you, you may be dealing with lovesickness. And six, you get a rush when they message you back. An emotional rush or sudden feelings of euphoria are signs that your brain has released high levels of dopamine into the body. Do you feel a rush of excitement and nerves every time you think about your crush or get a notification that they've replied? When you crush on someone new, there's an element of unpredictability because you don't know much about them. When you learn something new about your crush or think about how little you know about them, the uncertainty is linked with positive feelings of newness and excitement. So you might be experiencing lovesickness if you feel happier every time you're reminded of your crush. If you feel like your crush on someone is unhealthy or lasts longer than a few years, it's important to seek guidance from a licensed mental health professional. 
have you ever been lovesick? What have your experiences with lovesickness been like? We'd love to hear your thoughts. Leave your comments below and give the video a like if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to Psych2Go and hit the notification bell icon for more content. Thanks for watching and we'll see you soon.